all right what is going on everyone it has been a while since i made a video about the mr2 spider this video is kind of about it but not really at the same time this is going to be about tuning the apexy pfc specifically tuning the apexy pfc with copilot a application developed by someone on spider chat many years ago i'm talking like 2004 2005 2006 time frame so way back when it's possible this software is older than some of the people that are now buying these cars which is a weird thought well let me start out by giving you a warning um i'm not a professional tuner shocker i learned how to use the software on my own um if you follow what I'm showing you in this, and you break your car, I am not responsible for it. You're doing this at your own risk. All right, now that I have that out of the way, um, let's talk about this software a little bit. Well, actually, I'm gonna be talking about two different pieces of software. I'm gonna be talking about FC Edit and Copilot. What are they? FC Edit is the official tuning software I guess, developed by or developed for Apexi and the PFC products. Copilot, like I already said, is a piece of software that was developed by a guy, Kevin Bean, on the Spider Chat forum, specifically for the MR2 Spider or the 1ZZ platform originally. And then he kind of expanded it out from there and just kind of allowed all kinds of different platforms and cars to use it. Certain cars are still supported, certain cars aren't. Development of the application is done, has been done for years, so no other cars are going to be added to it. So if you want to use the Copilot application and your car is not supported, I'm sorry. Don't come to me. Don't ask me if I can add it, change it, whatever. I don't even have the source code. I know who has the source code. I'm not going to tell you who it is, and the development of this application is done. <sighs> now that I have all that out of the way, where do we start? Um... I'm not going to walk you through installing the application. If you can't get the application installed, there's a good chance you have absolutely no business trying to or even attempting to tune your car. I'm just not even going to go down that road. I already gave the warning. I don't want to be even more responsible if you break something because you don't have the technical ability to even install an application to do something that can break your car. First things first, before you do anything, back up your current map i don't care if you're running a stock map the default you just reinitialized your uh, pfc i really don't care back it up get into the habit of backing it up so here's what we're going to do to back it up first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up fc edit um if for any chance you need the software for this um i'm going to have it on my website i'll have all that linked down below all right, so now that I opened it up, you'll see it popped up asking me for the port number. I have my stuff connected up through an FC Heiko, so I need to check what port this is in. So right click on the start menu, device manager, and scroll down to ports com and LP. I see it is com nine, so exit out of that, go up here to setup and port and go to com nine. All right, now that read all. That will read all the maps. And once it reads everything, you can kind of click through, check out all the maps, and see what all's in there. Um, I don't care about that right now. Um, so, let's just go ahead and back this sucker up. File, save as, go to your directory, and give it a name, and save. Boom. Done. Your life is saved. Now you, if you accidentally break something, at least on the, the tune, the map side, you can restore it. I'm not going to say if you break your engine, you can't restore it. If you break your engine, you break your engine. All right, now let's get into the co-pilot side. So this is a little bit different of a install. Um, there's not going to be any start menu button, anything like that. You're going to actually have to go into the directory of it. So in my case, it uses the standard directory, which is the C drive program files x86 copilot. On that note, this application was originally developed on Windows XP and for Windows XP. It's old. It could run on Windows 7 without any problems. I again ran it on Windows 8 without any problems. Windows 10 is a crapshoot. I have it running without any problems, but your luck may vary. 
So let's go ahead and open it up. There is two files, two executables in this folder. You want the configure copilot one. So let's go ahead and double click that and run it. And it's gonna pop up with this option of which way you wanna start the application. Do you wanna use it offline? Do you wanna do replay? Do you wanna auto tune or do you wanna manual edit? For the sake of what we're doing right now, you're gonna to wanna to either select auto tune or manual edit and then click start. From here, it's gonna go ahead and open up the application. And before we really do anything, chances are it won't know what the hell to look at. So the first thing we need to do is select the serial port. Select the settings for the serial port and just go with it. So. Up top, go to com, go to settings, and on the right hand side, you will see there is port number. You're going to type in com port. In my case, it was nine. Type in whatever your port number is, and then you're going to have to hit apply. If you don't hit apply, you get nothing. It's going to go back to the default. Just click apply, click OK, and now you should be connecting to whatever interface you have. At this point, you can kind of click around. You can see all your maps and everything else that's in there. But for this example, I'm going to just go straight into what you're going to want to do next. Before you can do any tuning with this platform, you're going to need to get a couple sensors set up. Depending on what sensors you have in your car and depending on what interface you're using, you're going to have to configure all of that. So the first thing you're going to want to do is set up your I.O. settings. So you're going to go to settings, I.O. settings. And once that opens up, you're going to need to select your PFC interface. You got a couple options. You got the data logic black box. You got the data logic uh, beige box. And then you have the FC HACO and the random one down below that. In my case, I'm using the FC HACO. So I select that one. And then I switch over to the PFC interface AIs. And here you're going to select what the two inputs on your FC ACO are. In my case, I have wideband 02. You might have something else. In the near future, I'm also going to have a boost. But in this case, I'm going to stick to the wideband 02. And then we need to set the values of the wideband 02 or whatever other gauge you have. Most of these are going to be a voltage between 1 or 0 and 5 volts. Um, you're going to have to look up whatever your gauge is. Um, in my case, I have the Innovate uh, MTXL whatever wideband 02 sensor. So if you look in the documentation for that, it tells you a 0 volt reading coming from the gauge is 7.35 on the air fuel ratio gauge so 7.35 to 1 on the flip side of that 5 volts is 22.39 so right here 0 and 5 volts put in those values and then select calculate coefficients once you calculate the coefficients it's going to put the values into the numbers on the left hand side it's whatever chart it's building internally kevin bean was a much smarter dude than i am so i don't know specifically what these do i just know you put them in there you calculate the coefficients and it all works like magic so once i do that to calculate coefficients all the numbers are put in there everything is kosher you save as user defined and then you click ok and then close at this point, we need to basically reconnect, reload, reread everything. Because up until this point, the FC HACO and this software had no idea what to do with that 5 volt value. So now we need to again, read everything again. So we're going to go up top to COM, and we are going to restart COM and read all. And once you do that, it will go ahead and reconnect, read all of the maps, and we'll start once again logging and reading all the information. So now you can see up top here, 
the start acquisition has begun, the timer has begun, and everything has started registering as it's supposed to. And if we switch to the monitor tab, we can actually see everything that it's reading and everything that's going on. All right, so at this point, your uh, co-pilot should theoretically be set up to a point where you can data log. Other than that, I'm not going to walk you through in this video actually setting up Auto-Tune. It will take entirely too long, and this video is probably already getting too long. So I will save that until next week, next Friday specifically. I'm going to go ahead and put out another video going over auto-tuning. I'm going to do auto-tuning fuel first, and then after that, I'll go ahead and do another video where we talk about auto-tuning ignition timing. Um, I am not going to go over VVT and tuning that because that is a completely different beast, a completely different animal that is not easy or even practical or feasible to tune on the street. You kind of need a dyno to tune variable valve timing. All right, that's about all I'm going to go over for now. Um, I guess I will see you guys next Friday where I talk about auto-tuning for fuel. That's it. Later. See ya. Here is an example of just a quick log that I did around my street just watching the dashboard. You can see the speedo, the tack, the air fuel ratio, and then below that is kind of a line graph of all of the different things that are logged as I'm driving. Um, you can go through this and you can play with it and you can customize it. You can even add in gauges. So if you have a car computer or anything else set up and you have this in a monitor in there that stays full time, you can watch everything real time. Oh, 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 oh,